Legendary vampire hunter Snoop Dogg is not necessarily something I would have expected, but you know, it works surprisingly well. In Day Shift, a blue-collar dad provides for his family as a San Fernando Valley pool cleaner, which is secretly a front for a union of vampire hunters. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're gonna get. Today we're talking about the new Netflix film Day Shift, directed by J.J. Perry. This is all just gonna be my opinion. If you've seen the movie, leave your thoughts on it down below, positive, negative, whatever they may be. Let's just talk about it. We're not gonna go into any spoilers. I didn't know what this was gonna be at all, other than Jamie Foxx, fighting vampires. Okay, sounds like it could be kind of a fun time. J.J. Perry has a background in stunt work. This is his directorial debut, so I thought maybe he could bring some fun action to this. And ultimately, it ended up being a fun action time killer. This is not one of the best vampire movies you're ever gonna see in your life or anything. It's not the smartest movie in the world, but if you just want dumb vampire action, this will bring that to you. It certainly has its problems, which we're gonna get into, but to start off by talking about the things I liked, Jamie Foxx is good as this lead character. He's not really doing anything new, vastly different that we haven't seen from him before, but he's good, he's likable, and then you have Dave Franco as this accountant who works for this vampire hunting union, and he's tasked to ride with Jamie Foxx, so he's very out of his element, he's the nerdy character, and they have really good chemistry together. I think a lot of the humor, a lot of the dialogue, it's not necessarily like a smartly written movie, it depends on things like Dave Franco peeing his pants when he's scared, or referencing the Twilight movies. It's, you know, not the sharpest dialogue, but their chemistry carries it really well. And Snoop Dogg is also very fun as another vampire hunter. And there are some cool ideas here. I like the thought of this organization treating vampire hunting like a business. They turn in the fangs, they analyze them, see how much they're worth. This is how these people make their money. Also, in terms of the vampires themselves, there are some cool ideas. There are all these different types of vampires who behave differently and have different strengths and weaknesses. And the single coolest thing about this movie, something that makes the vampires stand out, is that some of them are very flexible. We got some contortionist action going on where the vampires will get blasted into a wall and their body will just crunch in on itself in all these weird ways and then they'll just contort themselves back and keep coming. And it looks really good. There's a lot of practical effects. You've got some actors who can actually bend their bodies in crazy ways. Some of it's probably CG, but you couldn't really tell all the time. Like it looks really good and it added an extra flair to the action, a little more uniqueness. It's cool when you can take something like vampires that have been done a million times and add a unique element to the lore. It made them feel all feral and inhuman, and that just added a lot of spice to the action. That's like what I'm gonna come away from this with the most. The action in general, because it was fun, but specifically that element of the vampires, their flexibility, that was really cool. That was always fun to watch. And there are some good action scenes, whether they're shootouts or car chases or just hand to hand. We got some good choreography, good stunt work. The action is fun. It's a very fun, fast paced movie. It's not concerned with a deep story, deep characters. Maybe it's a little over long for that. I feel like something like that would have been serviced with an hour and a half rather than an hour 50. But for the most part, it knows what it's there to do. And that's just to be fun. Some of it does feel like a little wasted potential. I don't know if they think this has franchise potential and they want to explore more in the sequels, like how maybe John Wick started to explore the Continental and all the rules and all the other assassins in its further sequels, but this movie's no John Wick, you know? It has some cool ideas in there, but I'm not clamoring for a sequel for it or anything like that. If you could take some of these ideas and expand on them in a different film or a different franchise, maybe that would be for the better. But like this organization, it would have been so cool to get more depth about it. These other vampire hunters that they team up with one time in the middle of the movie, and then they never show up again. You'd think like, okay, basic screenwriting, those guys are gonna come back for the climax. And then they just don't, and it just kind of feels like, oh, we got a little tiny glimpse into this world and all the things you could have done with this organization had you put more time into developing it. And it just feels like 
it's a bit wasted potential. Same thing with the different types of vampires. That feels like the kind of thing that could be explored in a more serious movie or more long form storytelling, but it feels like it's kind of barely scratching the surface. And the story is super simple and generic. It's the classic, if I don't get this money in time, my wife and daughter are gonna leave. They're gonna move away. But you also happen to have vampires in there. I kind of like that genre blend in a way. I like that there were very personal stakes for the main character in the middle of all the vampire hunting. It's like that classic generic story, but also he's, uh, you know, stabbing people in the heart and cutting heads off in the process. Kind of a cool blend of certain genre elements, but it's definitely true that the story's very simple and cliched. It's like, wow, I wonder if the wife and daughter are gonna get kidnapped by the vampires at some point. I can't imagine. The villains were very uninteresting. I'm not gonna remember them at all. They were just these generic vampire bad guys. The daughter was not in the movie much, but for what little she was in it, she wasn't really well handled as a character or with the performance, and I can't really blame the kid that much, you know, she's a kid, but also the way she's written. She doesn't really react to these life-threatening scenarios at all, and it just made her feel inhuman, made it harder to care and connect with her relationship to her father, Jamie Foxx. And there's also this other side character, Jamie Foxx's neighbor, who is kind of a baffling addition to this movie because she just is shown a couple times in the movie. Barely. Barely any screen time. Doesn't do anything. Her existence is just shown to us. So you know, okay, they're showing her just existing for a reason, so clearly there will be more to her later. So that's very predictable. And then when she does become more prominent at the end, it feels very random and shoehorned in. It's like, oh, okay, she's here too now, I guess. Who is she really? She's so underdeveloped. She feels so, so shoehorned in. And I don't know why. I don't know why she was even in the movie. Why they felt like they needed another character in there. But overall, it's pretty fun. It starts off with a bang. It kicks off right with this action scene, this long fight with a vampire and a lot of that contortionist action that I really liked. It was a shame that a lot of it kind of de-escalated from there. Cause like I said, it had a lot more potential if they took it more seriously, if they wanted to expand on world building more, if they wanted to spend more time on story and characters. You could have made this a great vampire movie if you wanted to lean into horror, you could have done that as well. They just made it an action comedy. There's a lot of ways these elements could have been used to greatness, but as it is, it's a dumb fun time killer. It has fun action. The opening scene kind of set the standard, like, oh, these vampires are gonna be really hard to kill. Like, even one of them is a tough fight. And then from there, they never really felt as threatening to, as that ever again throughout the whole movie, even the final battle, which was a shame. There's big wasted potential. I'm not gonna go out of my way to recommend this. It's not one of the best vampire movies you're gonna find. But if you're browsing Netflix and you're in the mood for dumb fun vampire action, if it sounds like it'll be a good time killer for you, I'm not gonna tell you not to watch it. It's okay. So ultimately, I think I'm gonna give Day Shift six pieces of chocolate out of 10. It is fine. It's not some incredibly intelligent piece of cinema, but it's about shooting vampires in the face with shotguns for a little while. And for that, it's fun. Could have had a lot more to it. Could have been a lot better, but it's a dumb fun time killer. And that's all I have to say about that. So if you've seen Day Shift, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below, whether you had fun with it, whether it was too stupid for you, what you thought about the characters and the story and the action. Leave your thoughts down below so we can talk about it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me. I also posted a review for Bodies, Bodies, Bodies this week. I also want to see Fall and whatever other movies come out and I feel like talking about. So thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you for the next one.